Hi, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cakes, and today I'm going to share with you my inspired English, traditional English overpiped cookies. And so let's begin. So whether you cover your cookie with fondant or royal icing, you need to wait a day before you do this. And we're going to we're using stiff consistency icing with a PME number five tip, and we're going to do a big C scroll onto our cookie. Now, if this had been a round cookie. I would have done the traditional Lambeth C scroll where you bring it up and it equals the other part. But, but since this is a square and I want it to look like it goes with the cookie, I'm going to do more of an elongated one. And then we're going to come in and do another one that's just a little bit smaller. And remember, you want to keep that groove up. We're not quite a 90 degree angle, we're more like an 80 degree angle just enough so that you can get that C scroll in there looking nice and then we're going to come in this way and we're going to go the opposite direction so you want your C scroll to come and hit this side and I'm not looking for it to be completely perfect because the flowers are going to be going there. So don't worry if it's not laying exactly the way you want. I'll put in another one. And I'm just going to put in half a one here and half a one here. When you have that done, you're going to take your number three PME tip and you're going to over pipe it, remembering to stay. Oh, I need to get this started. I thought I had this pushed down. Let me push down my bag just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Remember to stay inside one of those grooves that you made so that there's no air or space. You don't want to lift too high on this layer, and this is the only overpiped layer we're doing. We're not going to do like your traditional five layers that you would do with Lambeth. That'd be a little much for a cookie. This is just traditional English overpiping. And I want to show you how you could use that to decorate a beautiful cookie. When you come around and make your curly cue here, release pressure so that you don't get any type of a little. Hershey Kiss. That's nice and round. You're just going to keep doing that on all of your C scrolls. And I just noticed that I broke over on this one. So I'm going to real quick bring this back in. Well, I'm not. We'll just grab that up with our damp brush and repipe that real quick. It's super easy to fix. We're dry enough, believe it or not, on the bottom there where we did the open star that I can gently get this off. So, no harm, no foul, we're done. Got it off. Just put it to the side over here. And I'll repipe it. So I'm going to connect right where I was. And as long as I'm in that groove, you want to keep your pressure constant. As long as I'm in that groove, we shouldn't notice it. But we are putting a flower roses over it, so it's not that big a deal. And then release your pressure. And we're just overpiping each one. of the scrolls that we made and I decided to use the um, it's a number five open star tip by PME it seemed like the perfect size and shape for the cookie but if you wanted to use Wilton you could probably do a 14 would work well I wouldn't go any bigger than that
and I really want to do a white on white look for a, a bridal effect. And these actually are for a bridal shower, so that would be great. Alright, so now we have that all down. We just have to figure out where we want to put our flowers. So we're going to do three. These are our toothpick roses, and I have shown you how to do them before. And I have three full toothpick roses and two buds or uh, a bud or a bud with three petals on it, however you want to look at it. So I'm going to turn the cookie this way so that we can see how it should it would look. And this is just a tad wet, so we want to be a little bit careful. So wherever we place these, we want to keep them. We're not going to be able to move them around. You're going to put a little bit of royal icing on the bottom, or not a little bit. Fill the bottom with royal icing and put it down. Now because this is so wet, now normally I would let this dry, but I want to show you how this works. You're going to put them underneath. Or I mean on top and underneath, that doesn't make any sense. Put them on top of your, your beautiful scrolls. And we just kind of want to want them to have a nice look in here. I might not be able to get this third one in. Oh no, he can fit right there. So just kind of mess with them how you want them to go. I would let this bottom area that we just piped dry for about 25 minutes before you do this. As you can see it's fine but you really do need to know where you're putting each one of your each one of your flowers. I'll put my little bud right there. And then I'll put my other bud right about there. And then we're going to go and put some leaves in them. Now this is where if you keep it, if you could wait that 20 minutes, it would be perfect. So we're going to put some leaves in. I think I'll start, return this cookie. I'll start right inside here. And you just want to pump. I'm using a 50S. PME leaf tip. I'm going to release my pressure and it should give me a nice beautiful point, which it did. And the idea is to go under these roses just so you have a few leaves in there. Actually, I'll come back and get that one. And then where this one is, I'm going to put two leaves, and I might have one go up. Let's see how it looks. I kind of like just the two, so I'm going to leave it like that. Just want to place these leaves where you see any holes. And then we're going to do an over pipe shell border just from here to here. So I'm working with a 44 PME star tip. It is one of my favorite tips. And you just want to make a bobbleless ball and release your pressure and come back. and just keep doing that. Now this is an odd cookie in the sense that you have that point for the fancy square which I love the fancy square cookie. I use it for a lot of my posts and a lot of my decorating but I'm going to just forget that that little point is there so it doesn't give me an odd look.
You just want to come back enough so that you have almost a pearl type of a shell. You just want to push this little tail in there. There we go. And I only want to do it on this one side. Oops, that one didn't come, did he? All right, well, let's get him off and do it again. I only want to have it on the one side because we have so much delicate, beautiful work on the other side. So I just wanted something that was ornamental on this side that wouldn't take away from my design. Sorry, I've got tips falling over here. On the last one, I'm just going to bring him straight down and tuck in his little tail. Now we want these to dry for the overpiping, so I'm going to make up my number two bag and we'll be back. Okay, so we've waited about five minutes. That's all we need just for them to get crusted on the top. And we're going to do a little bit of an overpipe. So we're going to do an E-motion. We start on the top of the shell and we just go around and around and around, pull out and come around the other tail of the shell, release pressure, and then do it again. So you're just doing an E or a rope motion, whichever is easier for you to think of. And we're doing an S scroll. So we're coming around each of these little shells. And actually, this is a signature Eddie Spence design that I absolutely love and tend to use quite a bit. I used it on my um, my Lambeth string art string work cake on the sea scrolls. It's just a nice little way to finish everything off. And I'm working with a number two piping nozzle. And I'm at a slightly, a slight angle, not quite a 45, maybe a 60. And my bag is at 2 o'clock. That'd be 10 o'clock if you're left-handed. For this last one, because we don't have another shell to finish it off, so we're going to wrap it, our tail, around like that. And then grab our damp brush and close it down. And there is your traditional English piped inspired cookie. English over piped, excuse me. See you next time.